Hey everyone, it is Roman with Basic to Final. Welcome back to another F18C Study 101 video. This is Lesson 2. We're going to be going over V-Speeds and how to calculate a few of them. Takeoff, Climb, and Autopilot. It's a uh, quick look video, and if you're looking for a more in-depth academic level video, again, I recommend you go check out our VMFA 251 training module series. Link in the description. Okay, so we are now in the cockpit. In the previous lesson, we had just finished up section 1.2 pre-takeoff as part of Roman's PCL pocket checklist guide. We're going to quickly talk about some of the aspects in that pre-takeoff checklist. The first thing would be aircraft weight, why it's important to check, make sure it corresponds with the mission plane, V-speed calculations. If you come from the civilian aviation world, you're probably familiar with V1, V2, VR, VNE. The NATOPS uses different things like nose wheel liftoff speed, minimum go speed, etc. We're going to talk about climb performance and how to climb uh, most efficiently in the F-18. We'll talk about the 10,000 foot check you should probably do, and we'll finish it up by talking about autopilot. Because some people have had some problems, and there's a few tricks to uh, tuning that out if you're having problems. So that's the game plan, and let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so our first emphasis item is the aircraft weight. And one of the reasons we want to check this at the time of lineup is to make sure that when we're ready for takeoff, our aircraft weight is corresponding to the weight that we planned for. This might change if, for example, you change the loadout last second or you don't use up as much fuel as you anticipated in taxi and startup and whatnot, and so you're overweight. And it might not be a problem on a nice cool day, but on a hot day, high density altitude, uh, if you have an engine failure, you know, that could be a problem, especially if you're real draggy and, and whatnot. So it's just important to go ahead and check, make sure that your weight is corresponding to what you thought it would be. Now, this is not a guide on planning, but one of the documents I like to use is a document that I like to call the Mission Data Package Workbook. It's basically to facilitate proper planning for me. Now, we're not going to get into the planning uh, in this video. If there's an interest, I can definitely put a video together on that. Um, but we're specifically going to look at some of the, the V-speed items. So, V1, the speed at which takeoff should no longer be aborted. Uh, the, the NATOPS refers to as, as the max abort speed. Okay, now that changes based on the density ratio and based on your, your gross weight. So if you have a higher gross weight than what you planned for, that speed changes. Okay, now we'll get into calculations here in a second. Um, but just note that noting your aircraft weight is just a good check. Okay, so now for V-speeds, there's a lot of different V-speeds to calculate here. We're just going to talk about one of these problems. You can find this information in Naval Flight Manual-200, the FA-18. Uh, so the first one I want to talk about is V-1. This is the speed beyond which takeoff should no longer be aborted. In the NATOPS, it refers to it as max abort speed. You just think of this as after you hit this speed, you are committed to takeoff. You do not have enough runway left by which you can successfully abort your takeoff. Okay, Once you hit this speed, you got to go air. So it's a combination of density ratio, pressure altitude that you're at, um, you know, runway length, etc. And it's pretty easy to calculate. And you can see it's uh, probably a pretty worthwhile thing uh, to know. So the first thing you want to do is approach the density ratio chart from the bottom. Today we're at 20 degrees Celsius. We're going to approach it from the bottom and work our way up until we hit our pressure altitude. For all intent and purposes, if you go with a higher pressure altitude, you're assuming lower performance. So we're going to call it 5,500. We'll call it 6,000. Okay, And then we simply work our way left until we read the density ratio okay and so for this let's call our density ratio 0 0.79 okay so we just want to go ahead and remember that now to calculate our max abort speed you can do it based on maximum thrust you know wet thrust with afterburner or mill thrust it does not matter which one you choose uh, but you're going to approach the chart 
from the left at your density ratio. Okay, so we were at 0 0.79, and we're going to go to our runway length. Now, the runway length here at Tonopah, the runway that we're lined up for, is 12,000 feet. Okay, so we approach it, and now we're at point B. Okay, now we slide down until we hit our gross weight. This is one of the reasons it was important for us to have checked our gross weight and make sure it corresponds to the planning that we have done ahead of time. Okay, this is just an example of how to calculate it ahead of time if I didn't emphasize that. So we're going to slide down to 4,300 pounds. We're going to call it 4,400 pounds. Okay, just to uh, make our, our math a little easier or interpolation a little easier. We can see that we have a max abort speed of about 135, 135 knots or so. Okay, so if we hit 135 knots, we cannot safely abort the takeoff based on these conditions. Now, if it was raining, we would just go down to the bottom where it's maximum abort speed uh, for a wet runway. And that's it. It's just that simple. Okay, so to calculate VR, which is nose wheel liftoff speed in the Hornet, we first need to know our CG. CG stands for center of gravity. And to do this, you go to page 453 in the NATOPS for the F-18. And you can see that CG is a uh, in percent of mean aerodynamic cord percent Mac and we're a lot 20 Hornet so we start out with an initial CG percent Mac of 22.3 now we need to manipulate this number with respect to our loadout and stores so we're on the deck here uh, we have 570 rounds so we can subtract uh, 2 from that percent Mac which brings us to 20.3 we have two aim nines on our exterior wingtips of 0 0.2 each, which brings us up 0.4 to 20.7. We have two AIM 7s on station 4 and 6 at 0.5 each, brings us up to 21.7. We have a 330 gallon fuel tank at 6.8 gallon pounds per gallon, comes out to a little over 2,000 pounds on station 5, and you can see at the pylon there. So that brings us up to 19.3, we'll call it 19.1. Now, station 8 and 2, 3 and 7, we have bombs, but you'll notice it actually balances out with the pylons. So we're going to call our percent, or CG percent MAC of 19.1. The next thing that we need to do is we need to go to the A or F-18 performance uh, uh, manual. Page 53, takeoff distance, there is a chart for both uh, maximum thrust and page 55, military thrust takeoffs. Now I understand that these are for the GE 400 engines, but this will work close enough for our purposes in DCS. Now if we're going to look at the uh, maximum thrust takeoff, we have a weight of what we can see here at 43,000 pounds. We're going to round up to 44,000 pounds. We'll go down to the second chart and we have a percent MAC of 19.1. Now, there is no 19 on our chart here, so what we need to do is interpolate. We'll look at the 18, and we'll look at the 20. So the first top speed is the nose wheel liftoff speed, VR. So at 18, it's 170, and at 20, it's 162. There's a difference of eight between the two of them. Divide by two, that brings us four, which brings us up to a nose wheel liftoff speed of 166 knots. We will write that down and note that for takeoff. 166 knots is VR. Now our takeoff speed, which is the speed at which our main gears will come off the deck as well, uh, we can just do the same thing. 173 versus 179, there's a difference of six, divided by two, that's three. Comes out to 176, we should expect our main gears off the deck. And it's just that simple, pretty quick calculation. Okay, so for any of you who are interested in doing a proper takeoff brief, either with the squadron or with your friends, it can be pretty simple, and it can go something like this. Attention on the net, attention on the net, this is our takeoff brief. After takeoff, with positive rate, we'll fly runway heading and climb to 1,000 feet AGL, where we'll accelerate to 350 knots. At 350 knots, we'll initiate a mill performance climb to 15,000 feet and conduct our altitude checks. 
From there, we were vectored to waypoint 1, which is Lucy, and go on station. Configurations of the day are 44,000 pounds. This is a max power takeoff. Conditions of the day are predominantly VFR. Takeoff runway is 12,000 feet dry. Winds are 340 at 5, estimating 1 to 2 knots crosswind. We will not use speed brake on any abort today. Runway speeds. Rotation at 166 knots. Takeoff speed at 176 knots. And abort speed at 135 knots. Any problems, we will handle them as specified in our emergency procedures. And if we are about to depart the runway in an uncontrolled condition, we will eject. That concludes the takeoff brief. Are there any questions? And you can see it's uh, pretty simple, pretty quick, but it can definitely add a lot of depth and value to your mission. Okay, so for takeoff, according to the NatOps, there's a few items we want to make sure that we do. We want to make sure that our speed brake is retracted. We want to make sure that we are at takeoff flaps, half flaps. We want to make sure that our takeoff trim is set. We've got stab set for 12. And we're going to go ahead and line up with the runway here. And we'll roll forward to make sure that we're perfectly lined up. And you can do an engine run-up if you'd like. I uh, do not see the need to. I think the uh, HUD brightness is a little too bright. I can't really see what's on the runway too well. I'll turn that down slightly. Okay. And also, when we advance our throttles, we want to watch our EGT and our oil pressure to make sure that they stay within our operating limitations. With that complete, I also want to note uh, my current field elevation again. Just for my personal notes here, I'll advance the throttles. And remember, we're looking for our nose wheel liftoff speed of 166 knots. Once we approach that speed, we'll hold aft on the stick, and our nose will come up. And I'll take off speed, main gear come off at 176. There's our aft point, and that's pretty good. Positive rate, gear are coming up, flaps are coming up. thousand feet AGL. Go into Buster. And I'm gonna attempt to climb out at 350 knots. As we're climbing up, no salt oil pressure, it's below 180 psi, we are good to go there. GT's not looking too bad, it's a little hotter than I expected. Approaching 15,000. Okay, that's 15,000. I'm going to go ahead and throw us into autopilot. Okay, with that done, we'll do our 10,000 foot check. Cockpit altimeter, that matches what we see here. Speed indicator, that matches what we see here. And attitude indicator, that also works. Cabin pressure, we want to make sure that that matches what we're at. Not what we're at, excuse me, but that it is uh, well below safe altitude. Not sure if that's currently implemented or not. And we want to make sure that our fuel transfer is going well. Make sure that our transfer uh, tanks are not draining and that we are draining from our exterior tanks and you can see that taken down. So 10,000 foot checks are complete and now we can go ahead and talk about the autopilot. Okay, a few things with the autopilot. If you're having problems, the FA-18 will not engage autopilot if your stick has a problem. So what you can do to fix this, access tune, 
go to your pitch and your roll access tune and you can throw a dead zone in there on my satac x55 i've got to have a dead zone of about six it's a pretty old stick on the Threatmaster warhog i put one of one and that seems to be working pretty well haven't had much too much trouble with that and that should fix a lot of your problems now you've got uh four main modes barometric altitude hold radar altitude mode heading select and attitude hold now we're going to go to waypoint one which is Lucy, bearing 140 for 25. So one thing I can do is rotate my heading bug, and it's this little square there. Watch that little square rotate. Right or left click on this heading toggle. I'll throw it to my waypoint one. Actually, there we go. There's Lucy. It's uh, 090. I'll throw the heading bug on that. And if I hit heading select on the autopilot, it goes ahead and it throws me in a standard rate turn. And it will actually roll out on that heading that I've assigned. Which can be pretty handy. If I put it into attitude hold, which we'll see here in a second, I'll go ahead and speed up the time. If I throw it into attitude hold, it will actually hold our current attitude, and it won't roll out, which can be pretty useful. Okay, so we're going to see it roll out here. See all the pilots rolling it out, and that's pretty useful. Now if I change the bug again. Alright, it's got us in a standard rate turn, and if I hit attitude hold now it will not roll out so we're gonna pass through this bug here and I'll speed up the time again for us there we go you can see we're passing right through it and so I often find myself flying with the uh, the autopilot the F-18 it's just a smooth simple system I had a lot of problems with it uh, until I knew about setting a, a dead zone in my stick and that fixed pretty much everything for me so it's a pretty simple uh, system, but uh, I pretty much find myself using barometric and heading select and attitude the most. I've been staying away from radar altimeter, or excuse me, radar altitude mode, just because uh, it had some G problems when the F-18 first came out, and I haven't had a problem with uh, barometric. So that pretty much concludes it. If you have questions on that, feel free to uh, comment in the description. Thank you so much for watching. If you found these videos to be worth your time, please consider helping us out by liking, commenting, or subscribing below. We put a lot of time and effort into these videos, and it really does help us out. For more content from Basic to Final, please go ahead and check out our page. We'll be putting out more content here in the future. Again, thanks for watching.